Welcome to the channel. Today we're going to be working through a bit of a pet project of mine and integrating a Victron Smart Shunt into Home Assistant to measure the state of charge of my home built solar generator that I built with my teenage daughter as a DIY project. Let me know if you'd like to see a video on that. So let's charge up those batteries and dive on in. If you are still here, then you probably know who Victron are and the great products they create. But you might not know about the Victron Smart Shunt. This is a device that measures the power that goes into and out of a battery and is specifically very useful for lithium batteries that are very difficult to measure the state of charge. This information is then sent via Bluetooth to a Victron app and gives you lots of useful information, especially history information as to the state of charge with volts, amps and percentage state of charge. Now to be able to get this information into Home Assistant, you're going to need a Victron Smart Shunt. Links in the description to this amazing little device. You'll need the Victron Connect app installed and already reading the information from your Victron Smart Shunt. I'll put links in the description to the apps for iOS and Android. You'll need an ESP microcontroller. This can be any variant from the ESP Mini through to the ESP8266 and all the different sizes and shapes in between. I'll put links in the description to my favorite ESP32, but any will do. You'll also need Home Assistant Operating System or Home Assistant Supervise installed. I'll put links in the description to the Home Assistant installation guide. But to check on your system, navigate to Settings, About. If you see Supervisor, then you're good to go. And that's it. So let's get our ESP connected and configured. We'll need to confirm one setting and obtain two pieces of information from the Victron Connect app to make this work. Open your Victron Connect app. Select your Victron Smart Shunt. This should show you the state of charge plus various other measurements. Press the cog in the top right hand corner. Press the three dots in the top right hand corner. Select Product Information. Make sure that Instant Readout via Bluetooth is enabled. For Instant Readout details, press Show. Now copy the MAC address and the encryption key and email to yourself or any other method so that you have them available on your desktop. And that's all we need to do in the app. Now let's move over to the ESP configuration. Now there are many ways to configure ESP. The method I'm going to show you is the simplest way I have found, but it's not the only way. I'll be installing this on an instance of Home Assistant OS that's running on a VM, but the principles will be the same for other platforms. First we'll need ESP Home running on Home Assistant. If you already have this, then use the timestamps to skip over this section. Navigate to Settings, Add-ons, press the blue Add-on Store in the bottom right hand corner. Search for and select ESP Home. Press Install. Toggle on Watchdog and Show in Sidebar. There is no configuration required. Press Start. Now we need to set up our ESP32. Press Open Web UI. Now as I have some ESP Home devices already on my network, these will show up. Now press New Device. As this browser is not connected via HTTPS connection, you'll need to use the ESP Home Web. But for now, press Continue. ESP Home will tell you congratulations and create a device, but we still need to load the configuration onto the device. However, it will also give you an encryption key. This will also be available from the device menu, so you don't need to make a copy of this. Now press install. Now since we have not configured the ESP, the wireless will not work. The next two options allow for the server running on Home Assistant to be used for installation or a current computer, but using HTTP connections. As such, we'll select the manual method. ESP Home will prepare the Victron BLE configuration file. Once complete, ESP Home will ask you which format you wish to use. Select Factory Format. Now press Save As and place in a convenient location, such as your Downloads folder. Now press Close. Now we need to open ESP Home Web. Press the green New Devices button in the bottom right hand corner. Press Open ESP Home Web. Now press Connect you should be presented with USB devices that are available to connect to. If your ESP is not listed, then it probably means that you don't have the correct drivers loaded. I'll put links in the description to the various Windows and Mac drivers for the various different chipsets for the ESP32. Select your ESP32, 
and press connect. Now don't press prepare for first use as we'll be loading the configuration file that we just created. Press install. Now press choose file. Navigate to and select the bin file that we downloaded previously and press open. Now press install. ESP Home will try and connect your ESP32. Now depending upon which ESP32 you have, this might work straight away. But for me, I have to press and hold the reset button, which is the micro button on the ESP to the right of the USB plug until the ESP Home reports erasing. Once completed, you should be greeted with the configuration installed. Press close. Go back into ESP Home and you should now see that the Victron BLE ESP32 device is now online. Let's check that it is working as expected. Press Logs. The ESP will wirelessly connect to your device and report the statistics. Just make sure you don't see any red here and also make a note of the IP address of your device. Press Close. Now that our Victron BLE ESP device is online and we can connect to it wirelessly, we can configure it for our Victron shunt. Press Edit. Navigate to the link in the description for the Victron Smart shunt configuration. Select All and Copy. Move back into ESP Home and paste this into the configuration file. Now copy the MAC address that you obtained from the Victron Connect app and replace the My Smart Shunt MAC in the code, leaving the quotes. Do likewise for the binding key, which is the encryption key that you copied from the Victron Connect app. Now press Save. Now we can go ahead and install. Press the Install button. As your ESP is now online, we can select Wirelessly. Your configuration will now be uploaded wirelessly to your ESP32. Once finished, you'll see lots of purple. Now press Stop. Now we need to add the device to the ESP Home integration. Now if Auto Discovery has worked, the ESP Home will show up in your notifications. Press Notifications. Select Check It Out. Now press Configure. Home Assistant will ask if we wish to add the ESP Home node for Victron BLE. Press Submit. Optionally give it an area. And press Finish. Now let's go and have a look at the entities that are exposed. Search for and select ESP Home. Select the device's hyperlink for your Victron BLE. You can now see all the entities that you can see inside of your Victron Connect app. You can now use this information in dashboards as entities or graphs. You can even create automations such as alerting you when your battery is full. And we are done! Now this integration was made possible from an integration in GitHub from Fabian Schmidt. Link in the description. The integration also supports other Victron Blue products such as solar chargers, inverters, DC to DC converters to name just a few. If you have any such products then why not try it out and let us know how it went. I know that I'm going to be investing in some more Victron Blue devices as this allows me a greater degree of control for my solar generation. If you'd like to see my solar power station set up and maybe build your own, let me know in the comments. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video, and if you did, then maybe like, comment, share, and subscribe. And if I've helped you get your Victron equipment into Home Assistant, then maybe a PayPal donation or a super thanks, it's really appreciated. Until the next one, I hope your batteries remain fully charged.